Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer for Saratech. Today I'm going to be talking about combining load cases and output manipulation using SimCenter 3D. The first method that I want to discuss here is using this combined load cases. What you would do is you would right click on your results in the tree and you could specify this combined load cases. For the demonstration that I'm going to do today, I have six static load cases and one gravitational load that is acting in the Z direction. Now what I want to do is use a scalar to go ahead and multiply these load cases in some sort of fashion to give me new output. And I'm going to show a demonstration uh, to help explain these as we go. So once you specify that, it will bring you to this form where you specify a scalar factor and a load case that you are interested in. Now you can specify as many uh, load cases as you have defined and whatever scalar value that you want. Now, another way that you can do output manipulation is with this manipulation tab. One of the things that you can do in this manipulation tab is also enveloping. And we'll spend some time talking about enveloping and showing you uh, its useful features. Now, when you are doing uh, the enveloping, you'll see a different type of window. And one of the important things to notice is that when you see here, it says results type and a component where the first method would do all output vectors at once. This is doing an individual uh, results type and component individually. So if you wanted to do something like displacement, the other one would give you X, Y, Z, and the magnitude, where this one you would have to do each one individually. All right, so let's go ahead and open up SimCenter 3D and show you how these things are done. All right, so I have a simple model that I opened, that I created. Uh, it's a wing with the, the six load cases and uh, that one gravitational load. So you'll be able to see here, I have my six load cases and my gravitational load. And let's see if I have results. Yep, so I could go ahead and post-process my results if I'm interested in. In this case, let's look at something like uh, displacement in the Z. So I'm looking at my displacement in the Z, and maybe I wanted to know, in this case, we'll just think of something simple. Um, I wanted to know what is the difference between load case 1 Z displacement and load case 2 Z displacement. So I can look at it and I could, you know, do math and figure it out. But maybe I want to graphically show the, de the delta between them. So let's go ahead and specify a new output vector, or an output set, I'm sorry, that will show the output vector of the displacement differences. So we could right click on our results, say combine load cases, and this one, create a new one, and I'll call it case one and then minus case two and we can go ahead and specify that so we'll grab case one we'll do one times case one and then we'll do minus one times case two and that will give us a new combined load that is case one uh, plus the negative multiplication of case two so now when we go ahead and we look at our results We'll have a new one that is case one minus case two, and we can look at our displacement in the Z. Now, it might be useful, and this is one nice thing with uh, SimCenter, is we can go ahead and we can post all of them at once. So right here, I'm looking at case one minus case two, and up here in the top right, let's go ahead and uh, plot our Z displacement of that case, and let's go ahead and plot our Z displacement of uh, case two. And now I can see this is the delta between this one, this one, this one. And if you wanted to view these synchronous as well, you could go ahead and specify that as well. Look at it. I like to look at the displacements and, you know, specify and look however you see fit. All right. So let's go back to our model. Now, for instance, I want to combine these load cases in a specific fashion. And I have it in a... CSV file. Let me open up Excel real quick. And these are my cases. I'm creating 25 new cases. And here's my first subcase, second subcase, and it goes across. And then here is my scalar factor that I'm going to use uh, for that subcase. So, for instance, the first new combined case that I'm going to create has four times static case load one, seven times case, I'm sorry, subcase two. 
three times subcase three, and as you see going across. So I'm gonna create all these 25 cases at once using this CSV file, instead of having to, to manually enter those in uh, like I did that first time. So I can just say create combine load sets again. I'm gonna delete this one, or I can keep it there, it's up to me. Um, we'll just delete it to make things clear. And I can just create a right click up here, and I can say import from CSV, and it'll let me go ahead and import in that CSV file. You'll see that it filled it out for me. And now I can go ahead and I can create my new output. Okay. So now when I look at my results, I have my 25 new cases. Now, for instance, I'm interested in looking at the displacement. So the first one, wow, that went up a lot. And I can continue to look at each individual case displacement in the Z. Now, instead of me looking at each individual output vector and plotting each individually, this is where enveloping comes in. So I can envelope and look at all 25 cases at once, and it will plot the worst case or the, the absolute, you could say minimum or maximum in this case, or whichever case that you're interested using an envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify envelope. And what I wanna do is I would like to find the results from the first uh, solution that I have. In this case, I wanna grab all subcases, and this is how you add them to the list. Now, I know that my first seven aren't really going to have an effect because they're just smaller. I can remove them from the list. In reality, it wouldn't have made the difference because their maximum value is not as high as some of these other ones. So I'm going to say I want displacement nodal. And you'll notice the difference when we're doing this envelope is I have to specify an individual result, results type where the, the other one did all output vectors at once. So I'm going to say displacement nodal, and I want to know that Z displacement. For every case, I want to know the maximum. And then you can. this is just how you want to specify your output. You need to specify it as a CSV file, and you're going to name it however you want. Once I hit OK, it's going to calculate it. I get this new results right here, and now I can plot. And now it's just plotting the maximum displacement. Um, looks like I did in the X direction. So I wanted to do in the Z. Looks like I made a little mistake. So let's go ahead and do it again. So we can say envelope. Displacement node. This time we'll grab Z. We'll say all subcases. And we'll call this one M. Make sure we put a Z in this one. And wait, there we go. Displacement of the Z. Hit OK. Now I have a new one that is giving me max displacement in the Z. And I can post process that. And now I can see, you know, I have a large amount of displacement that is occurring from one of my subcases. So instead of looking at each individual one by itself, I can go ahead and envelope it, and now I have a maximum value from all those cases. Now, if I wanted to do other outputs, like I did that X, I could go ahead and specify that. Or if I wanted to do you know, a certain stress, strain, or whatever output vector I wanted to, I could also envelope them as well. So hopefully I showed that it's easy to create a linear combination of your output, and then to go ahead and envelope that output. Thank you for your time. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.